the bell icon to turn on notifications. Hello everyone and welcome to this video tutorial on some of the more advanced features in Zoom. So with the increase of everybody working from home in the last few months, Zoom has become the go-to application for collaborating and staying in touch with your teams and colleagues. And we put out a video probably about six months ago now, which just ran you through the basics of Zoom. So we thought that now that people have been using it for a few months and are more familiar with the basic tools, we'd create a video that goes through some of the more advanced options when you're hosting Zoom meetings. And we're going to start out by jumping into the meeting settings. So when you log into your Zoom account, if you click on settings from the left hand menu, it's going to take you straight into this little area here. And we've got three tabs running across the top. The one that I'm clicked on is meeting. And what I want to do is just go through some of these options and highlight the ones that I think are going to be particularly useful to you. So the first one here is the waiting room. So I have this toggled on and what this basically means is when I start a meeting, all participants of that meeting are held in a waiting room until I've actually joined the meeting. So it gives me an element of control. It means I don't have people jumping into that meeting and waiting for me. I can hold them in a meeting room and then let them in when I'm ready to start the meeting. So that's what this option does. Make sure you have that toggled on if that's something you'd like to use. Now I'm going to scroll down a bit further to the schedule a meeting section. So here you can choose how you enter your meeting. So if you want to start your meetings with your video automatically on, then make sure you have this option toggled on. Now, I don't particularly like that. I like to have control over that myself. Of course, you can turn your video on once you get into the call. But if you're always doing video calls, that might be an option that you want to turn on. The same thing goes for participants. And I will say a lot of people don't like this. They don't like their camera being on automatically when they join a meeting. So in general, I tend to keep this one toggled off, but that's entirely up to you. Now, this option just here, allow participants to join before the host. Now, this will actually automatically be toggled off if you've set the waiting room to on. OK, so if you've already turned this on, then this option is going to be toggled off. Now, another thing that's quite good is to enable personal meeting ID. So what this does is if you have this toggled on, it creates a personal meeting ID for you. And that's basically a nine to 11 digit number that's assigned to your account. So it basically means you can use the same URL, which includes the personal meeting room number every single time you have a meeting. You're not having to create new links for new meetings. So essentially, you could send your personal meeting ID out to everybody once, and then they can always use that same URL when you create a new meeting. Let's scroll down a bit. This one's also one you might want to toggle on. This will mute all participants when they join a meeting. So in the type of role that I do, I have this turned on all the time. It just means that everybody's microphones are turned off as they join the meeting. And then, of course, you can unmute people if required. Let's scroll down a bit further and go into some of the basic meeting setup. When it comes to chat, and you'll see this in a minute when we jump into the application, I've got allow meeting participants to send a message visible to all participants. So in the chat panel in Zoom, if you want everybody to be able to see everybody else's messages, then make sure that's toggled on. You can also select this option to prevent participants from saving off the chat transcript. What I also have toggled on underneath here, which is kind of related, is that I allow meeting participants to send private one to one messages to other participants. So in the chat, if you type in another participant's name, you can send them essentially a direct message. So this controls whether you want to allow that or not. And then also you can auto save chats. So again, all of the conversation that's going on in the chat panel during a meeting, if you want to set this to automatically save the meeting chat, then you'll want to toggle on this option. And then finally, in this section, if you want an audio notification when somebody joins or leaves this meeting, then you would toggle on this option. So let's move down to some of the options that are related to screen sharing. So this first option here that I have toggled on, this allows me to screen share with the participants in the meeting. 
And then underneath, I can specify who I want to allow to share. So currently, only myself as the host can share my screen. However, if I want to be able to pass control to other people and have them share their screen as well, I could change this to all participants. And I'm actually going to toggle that on. Remember, if you do make any changes to these settings, you need to make sure that you click save just underneath. And then another option I like to have on is annotation. So this will allow the host and participants to use annotation tools to add information to shared screens. And again, you'll see this in action in a moment. Annotation is great if you're collaborating on a document and you want everybody to get in there and be able to highlight things in a document, maybe add text, things like that using that annotation toolbar. And speaking of which, if we scroll down a bit further, we have remote control options. So this essentially allows me to pass control to other people in the meeting. So if I'm sharing my screen, I can pass control of the keyboard and mouse across to any other participant. Now something else in here that's reasonably new in Zoom is this nonverbal feedback. So it says here, participants in a meeting can provide nonverbal feedback and express opinions by clicking on icons in the participants panel. Now, I like to have this on because I find nonverbal feedback particularly useful. And again, you'll see this when we jump into the application. It just allows participants of the meeting to communicate with the host and each other using icons as opposed to unmuting their mic and speaking and maybe interrupting the flow of the presentation. I also like to have meeting reactions turned on. So that kind of enables emojis so you can give thumbs up, likes, things like that. Something else that can also be a little bit of fun is allowing participants to rename themselves. So by default, your name when you jump into Zoom is going to be whatever you've got on your account. You can actually temporarily rename yourself. So for example, it is Halloween today. Maybe you're about to have a meeting and just to inject a little bit of fun into proceedings. You might want to all have some kind of spooky name. And then underneath that, you can choose whether you want to hide participant profile pictures in a meeting. Now let's scroll down to the advanced meeting features, because there's a couple of things in here that I want to highlight to you. One of them is this option here, breakout rooms. So if you're conducting a very large meeting in Zoom, maybe you want people to work on different documents. Maybe you've set them a task or you want them to take part in activity in smaller groups. You can create a breakout room. So if I had a hundred people on a call and maybe I wanted to break them down into groups of 10, I could create 10 breakout rooms, assign 10 participants to each room and then set different exercises and different tasks for them to complete in each room. And again, I'm going to show you how that works when we jump into the application. But if that does sound like something you want to do, then make sure you have this option toggled on. Moving down, something that people have found extremely fun most recently are virtual backgrounds. You've probably seen people posting on LinkedIn with these. Again, a reasonably new feature in Zoom. You can customize your background to keep your environment private. So as a lot of us are working from home, maybe our background isn't the best. Maybe we don't want people to see that we haven't done the dishes today. We can add a virtual background, which will essentially hide everything that's going on behind us. And video filters have also been added, which are kind of like Snapchat filters, Instagram filters, if you've ever used anything like that, again, to inject a little bit of fun into proceedings. So that is pretty much all of the little options that I wanted to show you. Obviously, there's a lot more in there than what we've gone through, but I would encourage you to go through each one and just customize and set this up. What I've tried to do there is just highlight some of the ones that I think are most useful. So with all that said, let's join a meeting and see some of these features in action. So I'm going to go up to host a meeting and I'm going to say with video on. And I'm going to join with my computer audio. And there we go. There I am. Hello, everybody. And you can see that I have a beach background set. Now, my lighting isn't great in here, so if I look a little bit fuzzy, hopefully if you're in a nice bright room, it will be a little bit clearer. But you can see that because I set this background last time I was in Zoom, it's brought it through this time. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the participants panel. So at the bottom, we have our bar with various different ways that we can manage and interact in our meeting. 
So I'm going to click on participants to open up the participants pane. And you can see currently I am the only one in here. So what I might want to do is invite somebody else to this meeting. So I'm going to invite my colleague, Jen Green. And right at the bottom, I have an invite link. So let's say invite. I'm going to jump across to email. I'm just going to select Gmail. And I'm going to send that invite to Jen. So you can see that Jen has now joined this meeting, but she's being held in the waiting room. And that's because I have that setting turned on. So now she's in the waiting room. If I hover over, I can either choose to admit her or remove her. So I'm going to admit her to pull her into this meeting. And there we go. We can now see that we have Jen at the top there. Now, a few options that we have in here when it comes to managing the participants in our call. If you hover over any participant's name, you'll see that you get a more link. So I can choose to chat to her. I can ask her to start her video. I can make her a host or I can rename. So this is one of those options I was talking about earlier. I toggled on that option to allow people to be renamed. So I'm going to click on rename and let's just give Jen a new name. So as I said, it's Halloween today. So let's make it Halloween themed. Now I was just watching the Adams family. So I'm going to call her Morticia Adams. I think it's two D's. I can't remember. Let's click on OK. And there we go. Just a little bit of fun. Let's click more again. I can choose to put her back in the waiting room if I want to. I can remove her or I can report her. Now I don't want to do any of those things because she is a lovely lady. But just remember that you have those options for each participant. Now, one other thing that we toggled on were these nonverbal communication icons. And if you have that setting turned on, this is what you'll see at the bottom of the participants panel. So we've got a few different icons here which can indicate something to the host. So, for example, if I ask a question to all participants, so maybe I want to say, are you enjoying this meeting? And instead of having them all turn on their microphones and respond, what I can do is just get them to click one of the icons at the bottom. So I can see that Jen has clicked yes, she is enjoying this meeting. And once people have registered their response as the host, I have a clear all button at the bottom, which is going to allow me to clear all of those icons. Now I can also see that Jen has responded to me with a different icon this time, and that is the go slower icon. So again, if I'm talking a little bit too quickly, then maybe you might have participants asking you if you can go a little bit slower. Or alternatively, if you can go a little bit faster, I'm going to clear those responses. And underneath the more button, we have a few more features in here. So for example, we have the dislike and the like button. We have a clap and we also have a coffee icon. So this is great if somebody needs to nip away from their desk. Maybe they need to take a comfort break or maybe they want to grab a drink. They can indicate that to you by using the coffee cup icon. So it just means that, you know, maybe not to direct a question to them at that particular time. So a few different ways to non-verbally communicate, which I think are pretty cool. Now let's move into talking about virtual backgrounds and filters, because I know that's probably one of the things you're most excited about in this tutorial. Now to access the virtual backgrounds, if you go down to your options at the bottom and just click the up arrow next to stop video, you'll see you have options for choose virtual background and choose video filter. So if we select choose virtual background, it jumps me into the settings and to the background and filters area. And this is where you'll find five or so inbuilt backgrounds that you can use. And you just change yours by selecting any of these. I think I'm going to keep it on that. I feel like being a, a space woman today. Now, if you have your own image that you want to use, you can click on the plus and you can select any image that you have saved off locally. If you're particularly fancy and you have some kind of green screen, there's also an option at the bottom here for I have a green screen. And you can also flip your video to the opposite direction if you want to. So if you want to utilize things like backgrounds and filters, make sure you have that option turned on in settings as I showed you at the beginning. Now, video filters, again, I don't tend to use these too much, but if you want to maybe adjust the color, or add some funny things and you also have these little sort of Instagram Snapchat style filters as well. So, you know, again, these are kind of fun. 
if you want to use them, you have them there. Now, I don't think I quite like being a pig. After all, I am vegan. It's not good. So let's, <laughs> let's take that back to none. So that's where you'll find your background and your filters. Now I'm going to jump across to the chat panel. So let's click on chat. And you'll see that because I have participants open as well, I now have a split screen. So I'm going to turn off the participants panel for the time being so that chat takes up that entire window. So of course in here we can chat. So I'm going to say hello and that goes out to everyone. I can customize who I want that to go to. So maybe I want to send a direct message just to Jen, AKA Morticia Adams. I can select her name and I can say, hi, Jen. And that goes directly to Jen. And again, that is possible because of that option I have turned on in settings that allows me to direct message people. So let's go back. I'm going to turn off the chat panel and we'll pull participants back up again. Now, another thing we turned on in settings is reactions. So let's click on reactions. And again, you can see I get those emojis. So if I want to laugh at something, I can select the joy emoji. It just kind of puts that emoji next to me. Now you can't turn these off. They do disappear themselves after a few seconds, but it just allows people to register a reaction to something that you've said. Keeps the meeting interesting. And next to that, we have our breakout rooms option because I've got this turned on in settings. This allows you to put groups of people into separate virtual rooms that we call breakout rooms. And those operate independently from each other. So it's like having numerous different rooms with the door closed and each group can work on something different. So let me just very quickly show you how to set up a breakout room, even though there's only two of us on this call. So let's click breakout rooms. I can choose how many breakout rooms I want to create. So I'm just going to create two breakout rooms and then I can choose how I want to assign people. So I can choose to assign them automatically. I'm actually going to assign people manually. Click on create and I now get my two different rooms. I can rename these rooms to something a bit more meaningful. So I might say project team A. And then the next room is going to be project team B. And what I can then do is assign people to those rooms. So let's assign Morticia Adams to team B. And if I had more participants on this call, I could go through and assign some to team A as well. But that's basically how it works. I can also choose to add a room at this stage if I find I need more. And then when we're ready to go into breakout room mode, so when it comes time to do an exercise or a task, all you need to do is say open all rooms. And all participants will then get a message that invites them to join the breakout room. And what I can now see is that Jen has joined the room because I have a little green dot next to her name. So maybe I've given people a five minute time limit to work on whatever I need them to work on. And then I want to pull them all back into the main room. So if I want to do that, what I can do is broadcast a message to all, which is going to send a message to all of the rooms individually. Time to come back. And we're going to say broadcast to send that message. And what the people in those rooms can then do is simply leave the room and you'll see now that Morticia Adams is back in the main room. And when you're completely done, you can click close all rooms. Now, when you click that, it's going to give all participants 60 seconds to leave their breakout rooms before it boots them out automatically. So if they have any documents to close, things like that, it does give them a little bit of time. So that is the breakout rooms option. Pretty nice. Now, the final thing I'm going to jump into here is the share screen option. Now, you'll see as soon as I click on that, I have one participant can share at a time selected. I could if I wanted to allow multiple people to share at the same time, or I could jump into the advanced sharing options. Now, this is somewhat defined by my settings that I applied earlier. So if you remember, I set it so that all participants can share their screens and their content. So I'm going to close that down and let's just say share screen. Now here we get a choice of sharing our entire desktop, which is this screen option, or we can share a specific application. 
So remember, if you share your whole desktop, then everybody in your meeting is going to see any notification pop ups that you get. If you want to limit that and maybe just share a PowerPoint presentation or maybe an Excel spreadsheet, Word document, something like that, then you might be better off just selecting the particular application because it means that all they can see is that application. They're not going to see anything else that's happening on your desktop. Now, because this is a more advanced options tutorial, we're going to jump straight across to the advanced tab at the top. Because I have a few other options in here, I can do things like share a portion of my screen. So let's see what this option is all about. Let's click and click share. And what you'll see is that I have a PowerPoint presentation just behind and I have this movable window. So essentially what participants are seeing is just what's contained within this window. So if I only want them to see certain parts of the screen, I can just move this window just to show that part. So it kind of acts a bit like a magnifier as well. Now I can resize this window. So if I don't like the default size, I can just drag the corner out to share a little bit more and then move that around. So again, it gives you a little bit more control over exactly what it is that you're sharing. Now I'm going to say stop share to take me back. Let's jump into share screen again because I have some other options in here. Now I'm not going to go through this first option here because it's still in beta testing, but we do have options to share music or computer sound only and also content from a second camera. So if you have maybe a two laptop kind of setup going on, you can choose to share content from a second webcam or external camera that you might have. Now what I'm actually going to do is just jump back to the basic tab and I'm going to share Let's share this Word document just here. I'm going to click share. Because what you then get is when you are sharing your screen, in this case, a Word document, if you push your mouse all the way to the top of the screen, you then have some additional options. For example, annotations. So if I click on annotate, I now get an annotations toolbar, which is going to allow me to mark up what I have on the screen. So for example, you can see it's automatically jumped me into draw and my cursor has changed to a pencil. So I'm going to click on draw again. And if I was to select the rectangle tool, I can then drag over to highlight certain things in my document. If I don't like the red color, I can choose another color from the format palette. So let's do pink and then I can draw something else. So lots of different things that you can do in here. And because I have it set in settings so that everybody can annotate, it means that Jen could add some annotation to this as well if she wanted to. So I can see there that she is using the stamp tool and I can see where she's moving around on the screen. I can also see if she decides to draw all over my document as well. So really the main point here is to show you that other people other than yourself can annotate content. Now, if things start to get a little bit crazy as they are here, you have a clear button at the top and you can choose if you want to clear everything, clear just your drawings or clear the viewer's drawings. So I could clear Jen's scribble and leave mine on there. Now I'm actually going to clear everything off of this screen. You have lots of different options. Again, I'm not going to go through all of them. You can type text. You can use little stamps like so. You can choose to spotlight. So I have two options in here and this is a trainer's favorite tool. It allows you just to hover over and gives people a clearer idea of where you are. And of course we have the little arrow tool. So when you click it, you can point at things and it's tagged with your name. If at any point you want to go back to just your regular mouse, you can click on the mouse option and you get your regular cursor back again. So quite a few different options in there. And of course, if you do end up with a document that's been highly annotated and you want to save it off for reference later, you have a save option and you can essentially save it as a PNG picture file or a PDF document. So the annotate tool can be really useful. Now let's just click on more because there are a couple of options in here relating to annotations. So if I decide that I want to disable annotations for others, I can definitely do that. I could also hide the names of annotators. So you saw when we used that last tool, the arrow tool, it came up with my name on it. If I want to keep that anonymous, I can hide the names. So a couple of additional options related to annotations in there. Now I'm going to click on stop sharing just to come back to the main screen. 
So let's finish off this video tutorial by just running through some more settings because aside from the ones that we went through in Zoom, we do have settings within our meeting as well. So if we go back down to our toolbar at the bottom and click the up arrow next to stop video, we have an option here for video settings and that will jump us into our in meeting settings. So I would advise that you take a look through these and just toggle on and toggle off things that are relevant to you. We have our video settings in here. So it's picked up that I'm using a wide vision camera. It's just my laptop camera. It's HD. I have an option to touch up my appearance. So if I'm looking a bit tired today, I can use this scroll bar and it's like, again, it's like filters in Instagram or Facetune or something like that. You see, we're all living a lie. If I put that up a little bit, it makes me look slightly better. You can also adjust for low light. So if your room is particularly dark, then this setting is worth turning on. Now, another option you might want to turn on here is uh, see myself as the active speaker while speaking. So it just means that when I'm talking, I'm going to be the one who is large in the window. Let's jump across into audio. Again, this is where you can come if you need to test your speakers or your microphone. You can see here that mine is registering my voice as I'm speaking. So if you are having any audio issues, it's worth making sure you have the correct speakers and microphone selected. We have some options here which you might want to run through for sharing your screen and also options for when it comes to chat. Background and filters is where we were previously if you want to change your virtual background. So I'm going to go back to San Francisco. We have some recording options in here. So this is where it's going to store your meeting recording if you choose to record. And obviously you can change this location. You can also choose if you want to actually record video during screen sharing. So maybe when somebody shares a document, if it's particularly confidential, you don't want that to be recorded. You only want the main discussion recorded. You have your profile options in here, which you can edit. And then you have things like keyboard shortcuts. So if you're a big keyboard shortcuts person, and I know many people are, you can choose which one of these shortcuts you want to enable to make you more efficient when you're working within Zoom. So that was a very speedy look through those settings. As I said, I would advise you just to run through and toggle off and toggle on the ones that are going to be useful to you. But that is pretty much it. That was a run through of some of the newer features in Zoom and also some of the settings that you might want to turn on. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. I'm going to jump out of this meeting now and grab myself a coffee. Have a good day, everyone, and I will see you in the next video tutorial. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.